The Atlanta City Council adopts legislation ratifying the mayor's executive order directing the investment of $50 million in new bond funding to produce and preserve affordable housing in Atlanta. The order directs both the chief operating officer and chief financial officer to take actions necessary to request the issuance of the series 2021 drawdown bonds in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $50 million and the authorization and pre-validation of additional bonds in the aggregate principal amount not to exceed $100 million. The council says yes to a resolution requesting all relevant city departments modify painted and printed icon signage denoting accessibility for persons with disabilities to show a more action-oriented representation of the disability community on public property. The council approves a resolution to create the City of Atlanta Enterprise Resource Planning Steering Committee to provide responsibility and oversight in improving performance and delivery of city services. For more recently approved legislation, please visit our website, citycouncil.atlantaga.gov. This has been your Atlanta City Council Legislative Minute. A deadly pandemic brings the nation and the world to its knees. The novel coronavirus, later termed COVID-19, would headline our sentences and dictate the way we lived our lives. A suspicious illness with initial symptoms of cough, fever, and shortness of breath. Once considered a COVID-related pneumonia in Wuhan, China, only a few dozen cases at the time. Then Thailand and Japan, and soon the United States. Atlanta-based Centers for Disease Control begins COVID screenings at three U.S. airports, where flights from Wuhan were the most populated. Later in January, the CDC confirmed its first case in Washington state, then established a team to investigate. In February, United States declares a public health emergency after the World Health Organization announces the same globally. In March, the Georgia Department of Public Health reports that a Bartow County resident is Georgia's first COVID-19 related death. Mid-March saw a major shift as the governor closes K through 12 and post-secondary schools and issues his first shelter in place order. Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms issues a telework protocol for city employees and would soon close city hall to essential and non-essential employees, turning a bustling city hall into this a quiet, nearly empty building. The race for national vaccine and COVID-19 testing was now well underway. There was still so much unknown. We had a lot to figure out. Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms establishes a pandemic coordination team to outline the city's strategic plan. Five, six, seven, eight, we will begin. I call the meeting to order. Atlanta City Council meetings left the chamber to find a new temporary virtual home. Town halls would be remote. Senior walk events would be executed via computer. Even the planting of trees would be done while masked and socially distanced. The mayor issues an executive order creating a $7 million emergency fund to help those impacted by the virus. Food programs, help for the homeless, small business support, and help for others adversely impacted. Congress passes the CARES Act, providing emergency relief checks to Americans as the United States registers 100 deaths from COVID. Four firefighters with Atlanta Fire Rescue test positive for COVID-19. Sergeant Cortez Stafford tells us the virus led Chief Randall Slaughter to issue a state of emergency. Some of the administrative duties have been reassigned to make sure we have folks out there in the field available to respond to calls. And I think that's important because we have to anticipate that we ourselves, the fire department, may have members that are affected by the coronavirus. New protocols will be implemented for interaction with firefighters, police, and EMTs. Everything had changed. Unemployment rates spike, with the hospitality industry taking the largest hit. Before you recover, you, you have to um, you know, endure. 
And that's what businesses are doing right now is they're trying to make plans uh, to endure what we're going through. April, May, and June would see a combination of slowdowns and surges in cases, those also disproportionately impacting communities of color. Despite the restrictions, the nation gathered in protest upon the death of 46-year-old George Floyd, an African-American man who was killed as a Minneapolis police officer placed his knee on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Protests are believed to be connected to an increase in COVID cases. As hospitals became overwhelmed, there were shortages of ventilators, face shields, masks, and other important personal protective equipment. People from across the country would begin making masks for themselves and others. Council member Jennifer Ide and family would even join in to help, and Emory would engage in a major clinical trial involving a COVID-19 vaccine from Moderna and a drug called remdesivir. Hello, I'm Atlanta City Council member Howard Shook. Did you know the United States has been counting its population since 1790? The 2020 census enacts COVID-19 protocols and extends its deadline. New protocols are established for pregnant women. Dr. Anthony Fauci warns that new COVID cases could hit 100,000 per day. July saw scientists confirming that airborne particles played a role in the virus's transmission, prompting the World Health Organization to acknowledge it publicly. Florida becomes the epicenter of the virus. Civil rights icons John Lewis and C.T. Vivian pass away. And our own Atlanta mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, her husband and two family members test positive for COVID-19. Atlanta City Council members would continue in their mission to help those in need by providing community food drives and drive up grocery events. In August, the FDA issues emergency use authorization for convalescent plasma and COVID becomes the third leading cause of death. We have surge planning, we have COVID planning, um, been looked at great. We worked at um, partnering with our departments of public health, the National Guard, state and local officials, all to be prepared for the demand that may be seen in the community. September, October, and November saw fears of the upcoming flu season and a possible twindemic where the flu and COVID would collide. The CDC finds a connection between COVID cases and those who dined out at restaurants. President Trump, along with First Lady Melania and their son, test positive for COVID-19. And Georgia citizens cast ballots in the presidential election during a pandemic. Joe Biden is elected president, Kamala Harris, vice president. Council members Andrea Boone, actor T.I. and the mayor help families during a drive through turkey giveaway. Christmas takes on a whole new meaning and hope as the first batches of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine roll out in Georgia, focused on frontline healthcare workers and residents of long-term care facilities. Medical experts asked that holiday travel be limited, but many COVID fatigued took to the highways and skies anyway. December would become the deadliest month of the pandemic in the U.S. with more than 65,000 dead. COVID-19 now the leading cause of death in the United States. With more vaccines on the way, medical experts hope all Americans who want the shot will have access to it by June of 2021. Welcome to Stay at Home Connect. I'm Phyllis Jackson. Georgia's Department of Public Health reporting its first case of the COVID UK variant. The patient is said to be an 18 year old man with no history of travel. He is currently in isolation at home. Although this mutation is more contagious, medical experts say they can't confirm that this strain is more severe or that it will lead to an increase in deaths. The UK variant has been discovered in New York, Colorado, 
and California. There is some indication that a new extremely contagious COVID-19 variant out of South Africa could be resistant to the new vaccines. Researchers are concerned that this mutation may actually disable the vaccine's effectiveness, but are investigating its impact. Georgia elects Reverend Raphael Warnock in the Senate runoff against Kelly Leffler. The senior pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, Warnock makes history as the first black senator to be elected from the state of Georgia. He is also the 11th black senator ever elected to the U.S. Senate. John Ossoff defeats David Perdue to become the youngest senator in 40 years. Warnock and Ossoff's wins give Democrats control of the Senate, which is now evenly split between them and the Republicans. Any ties would be decided by vice president-elect Kamala Harris. The surge of COVID-19 in Georgia is impacting every aspect of the medical community. Northside Hospital officials tell me that their convalescent plasma supply is depleted. Since launching the convalescent plasma program, Atlanta Blood Services has collected more than 1,700 units of plasma from 563 donors. Now there's a waiting list. I caught up with Carrie Cox, executive director of Atlanta Blood Services. So many people are meeting the needs in whatever way they can. So for people who may be considering uh, donating plasma, this very awesome plasma, uh, tell us what the requirements are. And if they're a little on the fence, what do they need to know about the process? Okay, thank you for asking that. Really what we're looking for right now are is anybody who has recovered in the past 14 days to 90 days. That's when your antibody levels are the highest, and that's when we want to collect your plasma, when we want to collect that liquid portion of your blood that has the, has the antibodies that will help somebody else out. We want you to be at least 18 years of age, make sure you're in good health, make sure you have recovered from your COVID infection, we make sure you, that you're healthy, and um, meet all of the regular blood donor criteria. If you or someone you know has recovered from COVID-19 and would like to donate convalescent plasma or learn more about eligibility, go to atlantabloodservices.com or call 404-477-1298. Vaccination efforts continue in a slow pace. Georgia health officials say that while some healthcare workers in Metro Atlanta are getting vaccinations, vaccines are literally sitting in freezers in some rural parts of the state. Public Health Director Dr. Kathleen Toomey says lack of adequate staffing and logistics seem to be playing a role in the problem. Doctors in Los Angeles County say COVID cases have quadrupled since November. They are struggling to maintain the proper amount of air pressure for adequate oxygen levels and have even instructed paramedics not to transport patients with little chance of survival. Officials say someone is dying every 15 minutes in Los Angeles County. Atlanta City Council member Michael Bond joins with the Atlanta Police Department's Historical Society to honor APD officer Claude Monday, the first African-American APD officer killed in the line of duty back in 1961. The socially distanced ceremony was held at Lincoln Cemetery. Many of the people that he was charged with protecting probably wouldn't have sat next to him in a lunch counter. May have called him the, the N-word, but yet he had sworn an oath to protect those individuals and individuals from his own block, from his own community. And of course, he did not get the type of recognition at the type, time of his death. Uh, his family didn't get uh, to honor him in the way that we honor our fallen police officers today. And so we want to recognize, one, how far we've come in our society since those segregated times. And then, two, make sure that we're honoring those who do sacrifice everything on behalf of the greater good. COVID-19 impacting music's big night. The Grammys have been postponed due to the virus. Officials say they will have the big event on the 14th of March. We'll see you on the next episode of Stay at Home Connect. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Madeline Archibong. I am chair of the City Utilities Committee. And today is January 12, 2021. I want to um, call the meeting to order and have our analyst, Mr. Jared Evans, do a roll call, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Uh, Council Member Andrea L. Boone. Present. Present. Thank you. Council Member Dustin Hillis. Here. Council Member J.P. Matsukai. Here. Council Member Joyce Shepard. Present. Council Member Howard Shook. Council Member Cleta Winslow. Present. Madam Chair, a quorum is present. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next, uh, we'll have Mr. Evans read our remote meeting statement. Thank you. This City Utilities Committee is being conducted remotely as advertised and in accordance with OCGA 50-14-1. The meeting will be conducted in conformance with Robert's Rules of Order and the Rules of Council as authorized by the City Code. The public may access the meeting by dialing 877-579-6743, conference ID 831-599-1256, which was noted on the Feb, uh, Friday, January 8th public meeting notice. The public may also view the meeting on Channel 26, the Council's homepage at citycouncil.atlantaga.gov, the Council's YouTube channel, or the Council's Facebook and Twitter pages via at ATL Council. All presentations are available on the Atlanta City Council City Utilities Committee presentation page. The agenda was published and made available Friday, January 8th via atlantacityga.iqm2.com. Additionally, the public was able to submit comments via voicemail at 404-330-6057 between the hours of 4 and 7 p.m. the day before this meeting. These comments will be played during the public comment portion of this meeting. All persons present on the remote council meeting conference bridge are requested to mute your phones and speakers. Additionally, speakers must be acknowledged by the presiding officer prior to speaking. Each council member is requested to open your Outlook email and minimize the screen. Amendments, substitutes, and informational documents have been distributed to council members beforehand. Thank you all in advance for your cooperation. All right. Thank you very much for reading that statement. Next is the adoption of the agenda. This is an electronic vote. I will enter the motion in a second. So move, Matt, to Kate. Thank right. you. Um, we can open that vote. I am offline, so uh, mark me as a Yay. Ms. Boone, how do you vote? Yay. Thank you, Ms. Winslow. How do you vote? In favor. Great. Uh, Shook is on the call, audio only. I vote aye. Thank you, sir. It appears the vote is unanimous. Uh, the next order of business that the adoption of the agenda is completed. Now, approval of the minutes. I'll entertain a motion. So move, Shook. Sure. Thank you. Um, let's open up the vote. I vote yay. Let's see if I can remember everybody. Ms. Boone, how do you vote? Yay. yay. Uh, Ms. Uh, Winslow, how do you in favor. Is that everybody? Okay. The vote is closed. It is uh, unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, we have approved the minutes. Next uh, item, item F, election of a vice chair of the committee. I nominate council member Andrea Boone. Chuck seconds. Thank you. If there are no other nominations, I move that we close nominations. Chuck seconds. Objection to that? All right, I'm a unanimous consent that uh, Council Member Boone become vice chair of the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair and committee members. Thank you. All right, thank you. So uh, we now have our vice chair, so now Colleagues, I just want to bring your attention to our goals and objectives for the year 2021. We're not going to move on those today, but please submit them to Mr. Evans and a copy to all committee members um, so that by the next 
meeting, we'll be able to uh, have the cumulative list of those items that we want to guide us in the coming months. All right, next, moving to public comment, section eight. Understand we do have public comment. Mr. Evans, would you please uh, play the public comment? Thank you, my name is Ron Shakir. We are all connected. God bless America and grant her the peace that we all may be able to be a better country with oneness in our reality. The fact is that we are different in that reality and that difference not need to push down or um, not consider the need of the other or the advantages of the other or the gifts of the other, but we all possess gifts. <laughs> but I am shaken today with the policies that has formed what we see today in uh, uh, with the arm of utilities, with the service of utilities, where we see resources used for public utilities being privatized or directed towards special interests. These special interests are denying excess, are denying opportunity and denying equity in our communities. These public utilities are connected with the planning department, with the public, with the community development in directions of parks that gentrify or trails that gentrify and create housing crisis in our city. And you cannot mask it. The truth of the fact is, is that we have to identify every utility project that goes on the table. And that needs to represent a clear, a clear um, 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 ability or a, a non, a non hindrance, hindrance to black communities or a destabilization of black communities or how the black community, African-American community is going to be impacted by that utility. The planning department won't do it. The city council gets mute when it comes to having public comment on the impact of these public utilities. They ask no questions on the on transportation or or uh, public street cleaning that we know within your all in our generation over five hundred city employees was laid off. What was the impact of that? I ask you, please, to step up to a better responsibility of recognizing the impact of African Americans when you make your decisions in the use of the public utilities. Thank you very much. Greetings to each council members and staff, and special greetings to you citizens and voters of Atlanta who are tuned in to take note of how our council members are doing and how combats from the public are being treated. In our thing, advocates, the city continues to fail in its obligations to the People TV Board of Directors and to the citizens of Atlanta. I speak specifically about the People TV Board member slots allocated to the legislative branch and the People TV Board member slots allocated to the executive branch of our city. These all need to be filled post haste and filled with community conscious grassroots citizens who believe in public television and who can help ensure that notices of people TV board meetings get out to the public in accordance with the Georgia Open Meetings Act. The Atlanta Planning Advisory Board, APAB, meets on the third Saturday of this month, January 16th. The APAB, under the presidency of Debbie Skopchinski, chooses to revitalize the APAP City Utilities Committee, you may be able to get some help in making sure that these People TV board slots get filled. By your seeing to it 
that these vacant board slots are filled, People TV can once again help to bring attention to the anti-people antics of the so-called leaders of Neighborhood Planning Unit R by revitalizing projects like APAB Rundown and like NTU on TV. The public needs to know how and why it is that 1% of the NTUR population of 20,000 is being allowed to represent all the rest of the 20,000 residents by the NTUR 9, Antonita Robinson, Paulus Clare, Ricardo Jacobs, Renette L. Scott, Alfred White, Allison Hathaway, Sherry Williams, and the NTUR 9 cohorts, enablers, and supporters. Hello, my name is Victoria Link. I had called you 11 messages in December asking you to repeal the adequate fee imposed on condo owners. As you know, condos are required to hire their own private trash collector. So therefore, we do not receive trash collection from the city, yet we are charged up to 225 in 2020, and it can go up further this year. Uh, it is unfair. Not, all, not to mention, it is also illegal because the city is, in fact, a backdoor tax charged only to a specific segment of the population, aka the condo owners, and not everyone. Yet, money was portrayed by the public works as common good service. I'm asking you again as utility committee member to look into this and repeal this unfair unfair and illegal so called fee. Thank you. I believe that concludes our public comment. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh next we have presentations and today we will have uh, Patricia Creighton, General Manager of People TV to provide an update. Ms. Creighton, are you on the phone? Ms. Creighton? Good morning everybody, how you doing? We're well, thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. I've got my operational manager, Michael McMahon, here with me also in case he wants to have some input on something that we talk about. But uh, I would proceed with the uh, my presentation. I don't want to take up too much of y'all time. It's short and sweet. The quarterly report and the impact of the virus on it has uh, stipend us a lot. So everybody's got a copy, correct? Uh, yes, yeah, colleagues, it is in the uh, packet that we received. We do not have a PowerPoint. Mr. Evans, is anything online for people to? No, there's no PowerPoint. Yeah, there no, will just be, uh, Madam Chair, there will just be a picture of uh, Ms. Creighton and a, the People TV logo while this is being discussed. Uh, uh, no, I don't, I've got just the one that you did. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, please go ahead. I didn't know. I wish I had knew the picture y'all have of me down there. <laughs> On our organizational chart, you can see that the board of directors is uh, at the top of the chart, then myself as general manager, and then Mr. Michael. Hello? Uh, yeah, go ahead. We can hear you. Okay. I heard a book, bees or something. Michael McMahon is taking care of operations and programming. We do have open positions that we plan to fill later on in the year as things get better. And that would be the office assistant and the programmer. Now under our governance, People TV is governed and managed by the board of directors consisting of four directors appointed by the mayor, three appointed by city council and up to 10 elected by People TV board. At no time shall the board consist of fewer than seven members. There are six board member appointee slots 
that need to be filled by the mayor's office and the city council as of December 31st, 2020. Listed below are the names and positions of the members that are on the board. We currently have eight acting members. Dr. Johnny Wilson, president, he was appointed by the mayor. Uh, Calvin Dismail is acting as treasurer. He was appointed by the board. Della Brooks, secretary, she was appointed by the board. Valencia Goodman, appointed by the board. Corey Tinsley, appointed by the board. Stetson White, Ron Shakir, and Ola Tundi Nabumba, also appointed by the board. Now, I'm not going to go through the general manager, my description, because it was in the same report, and I, don't, I, I would like to ask Madam Chair, do I actually have to add the same general information about myself as staff and Michael in each report? I, I think the organizational chart is instructive. We don't need your bio or the uh, responsibilities assigned to each uh, member of the team. Okay, great. Every now, I'm, I'm on, uh, oh, I didn't number the pages, but it's financial management is the next page that I want to uh, present to you. As part of his mission to provide access to people that would otherwise not have a voice through traditional com uh, commercial media, People TV offers use of its facilities and equipment to, com to community producers and charges nominal fees for the various training workshops. Until the end of 2009, major funding was from Comcast as part of the franchise agreement with the city of Atlanta. Funding decreased starting in 2012 and has continued to date. People TV Inc. is currently waiting signatures from the mayor's office to finalize a new agreement that would make our funding $180,000 yearly, paid in two payments of $90,000 semi-annually. While in negotiation with the city for the new contract, People TV Inc. has not been compensated for services rendered as part of the negotiation. That amount totals $78,125. This could have greatly impacted our ability to maintain functional facilities required by the franchise agreement. This all, along with the impact of the COVID-19 virus prompt us to file for and receive a loan from the SBA in the amount of $107,500 to be repaid over 30 years. And that is the reason why People TV today is still over. Next sheet is a summary, and this is not, I've got the, I'm going to, and we are in the motion of hiring a CPA do our bookkeeping to do our books, but this is what I've done with the bookkeeper. I'm, I was told by the treasurer that we need to secure a CPA. So these numbers are not, they have not been audited and they're not final. I can put it like that. City of Atlanta up to as of the 31st of December, 2020 had paid us $109,375 the loan from the SBA that we received in July was $107,500. Workshops that we, from the end of the year, was $875. Channel applications, $2,103. Donations was $67. That total was $219,940. And the beginning balance that we had in there was $14,562. That total $234,500. Our rent totaled $91,300. But do I have to read? Of seven, the payroll was $76,000. Utilities, $18,960. Equipment purchases, $1,826. Office protection, office protection, the lawyer. And the miscellaneous, I didn't put miscellaneous on, it came to $2,653. The audit deposit for our audit for 2019 was $2,000. That audit has not been completed for clerical reasons. Insurance to date, $2,101. Back taxes we paid from 2013 to 2015 was $23,835. 
We had mold, furnace, and roof repair total $1,265. That came to $219,940. I've attached a profit and loss quarterly and a general ledger report so you can see what that was. I got something missing. Oh, yeah, that was the $14,000. And the balance that we have in the bank today is $14,560. $62. It don't look right. Anyway, okay, any questions on that? Not yet. Oh, yeah. Yes, definitely. All right, I'm on the next page. The summary of contract agreement. People TV is governed by the board of directors. Membership is open. People TV has operated without a contract since 2013. Operators, People TV operates with two full-time employees that support operations, programming, production, business functions, and everything else. Custodial. In February 2019, Dr. Wilson and I went presented a contract that we got from the lawyer to present to the city of a council after that, we were presented with the special procurement number 1200233 Public Access Channel Operators Agreement. That was in July. They gave us five days to sign this agreement and turn it back in to them. Upon hiring a lawyer, it took five months of negotiation with the city to get this completed. And it was delivered December the 28th, 2020. People TV Inc. had staff as work under the guidelines of the CDC, CDC during the pandemic. And that has stifled us in doing several things that we want to do. And one of them is hiring out the facilities to uh, filmmakers in the area. Uh, so those are some of the things that are challenges. And the next page is again the challenges. The Board of Directors developed People TV Inc. is seeking board members. That's a challenge that we've been working with for a while. People TV Board of Directors in the past faced high breakdowns. The actions of outside individuals help lack, fuel lack and breakdown in the operation. The lack of commitment and engagement in the director's effects of the constant bar badgering and how we now we only have eight members on the board. I'm hoping for a new day that we can work together and fill the vacancies and get dedicated people on the board that have true passion for public access and free speech as our right and hold a team effort and attitude and subscription sustainability to work with others to keep public access out of the black. Keeping the doors open and everyone that enters safe is top priority during the pandemic. With the number of cases spiking in Georgia, the concern is staggering and causing tension and more fear than ever before. Well, working in adverse conditions, Building, heating and air conditioning is not working in half of the building. In the winter, the offices are cold and the summer extremely hot. I am constantly working on my immune system to stay well, as, as, as is Mr. McMahon. The community interest and demand for media training has decreased tremendously. In the past, we have had up to 80 people to show up at one orientation on the night. Our orientation in 2019, there were eight people. People TV is developing innovative ways to stream outcasts to, out, to showcase our product through Facebook and live streaming. We are also allowing block broadcasting and still in the process of, acquire, of, of, of acquiring a mobile unit. Our tell view was the, was terminated in 2013. As a result, programming technical infrastructures was outdated from years behind in the software upgrades. 
and People TV Inc. operated without technical assistance when server malfunctions occurred. This is where Mr. McMahon came in and was able to bypass that system and keep us on the air. Hallelujah. As a result, our local programming staff, on, he's on call almost 24-7, and sometimes the programming is delayed. This situation is ongoing since the 2017 RFP when an equipment budget was in that RFP for $75,000 as, as a line item and to ensure to update the studio. This has never been executed. And I will add, I will, I just, I can't express myself enough on how I feel it's unfair that we have not gotten that money to keep us going. Now, grants outreach, the transition of People TV cover the, in the past three years have ne ne negatively impacted People TV's grant eligibility because we didn't have a contract. It staggered us from getting contracts, but now hopefully we can get the contract signed and move on. I've, and I've, I'm done with my report. Mr. McMahon, you want to add something? Yes, please. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is Mike McMahon. Uh, I just wanted to give you a, a, a quick presentation of uh, it's really a list of operation and technical mod modifications that we have innovated here since 2017, since we became a two person staff. My name is Mike McMahon. Um, I first came to People TV in 2005, and we had a staff of 24 people. Um, over the years, as it dwindled uh, and there were layoffs, I was asked to come back by the board um, and uh, to keep it operating. And uh, that's what I've been doing since 2013. And um, since 2017, when I was asked to take over the programming as well as the production operations, um, I instituted some changes that uh, has affected people TV in terms of, even though we still have old, some old equipment, um, I've got three generations of equipment here working together so that we can do things online. Um, so I just wanted, I, I, I am aware of emails that are sent, unfortunately, to the council people and um, other people that really shouldn't be included, um, criticizing us and otherwise complaining about what we don't do. So I made a list of what we have done as a two-person staff uh, that, there, there, many of them are things that were on the list of staff meetings over the years and uh, were never done with a, with, a, with a full staff. But since her and I have been uh, managing it alone, number one, we became a 24-hour channel. We used to go to free speech at 12 midnight until 12 noon when we had a full staff. But we see 24-hour local programming on now most of the time and uh, has opened up, we've opened up blocks of time for Atlanta residents who have YouTube channels to also air here, and we uh, complement one another uh, by us having local content in another form, and they have it in another platform for people to find their content. So two, we stream and archive all live programming on Facebook Live now, um, allowing our channel to be seen on cell phones and for our guests to see themselves uh, on our channel immediately after they get off the, at, off, off the stage and off the program. Master Control was upgraded to include more digital technology. Uh, programming is now electronically delivered to People TV, despite uh, rumors that it is not. Um, our program is now digitally backed up and archived, whereas most programs were returned or discarded before 2017. Studio and Control Room A were upgraded to HD we refurbished the new equipment that we saved and purchased over t we saved for and purchased over time. Studio A was renovated to have five separate stages and backgrounds, which came in real handy. We did it just in the holidays 2019, just before the virus hit, and it allows us to have hosts and guests to sit on separate stages in the studio, thereby keeping social distancing concerns um, up to par. Um, studio. Operations of facility usage was modified and conservation efforts were put in place that reduced our utilities costs to a fraction of what they used to be. 
all technical assistance and maintenance costs, annual incidental, have been eliminated as we internally repair, replace, and upgrade our equipment and software. People TV trained and employed interns from North Atlanta and Washington High Schools. We partnered with other nonprofit organizations uh, to have the whole fundraising and awareness events, including a free COVID-19 testing we did here, uh, partnered with the Atlanta Urban League. We implemented Retro PTV, which is our platform during which we air Vintage People TV programming, including Ali Pat show, uh, to, cap to, to capsule what Pe People TV has rent to Atlanta over the years. And finally, we updated, <laughs> we updated the training workshops to include modern equipment and studio operation procedures and enable our students to learn about video and production beyond the public access model. Thank you. I, um, thank you both very much. I need to see if there are any uh, colleagues. I'm not connected again. Uh, are any colleagues, do any colleagues have questions? Well, we, we, I, we'd like to offer uh, an opportunity for all the council people to come and check out the new studios. We had Cleo Winslow and uh, Ms. Archibong, uh, but we, we invite everybody to come down and check out what we're doing and to even appear on our programs to address your constituents um, with any concerns that you have electronically. Thank um, you. No, thank you. Um, Mr. Evans, have any of the committee members indicated they'd like to ask any questions? Madam Chair, I don't see any hands raised. All right. Um, is anyone uh, queued up from the law department or procurement to uh, let us know the status of the execution of the contract? There may be staff on the line. There is no one who's indicated specifically that they would like to speak about this. All right, so um, we should have asked that question, uh, Ms. Evans, of them. Um, we had this report in advance, so I take responsibility for that. The um, only question that I had was relative to was the contract executed, when will it be executed, and then the question from the public that has come across my desk is relative to the ability of what um, sort of the SBA loan that was obtained, um, and then what my question would be how is that to be repaid? What were the terms, and how does that um, relate to any provision in the contract with the city that may have prohibited um, the center from being able to, or people to be from being able to um, apply for receive own so contract that has its own set of issues. So, those are some questions to be followed up on. And the other point I would make, um, Ms. Creighton, is uh, in looking at previous contracts with the city, there was a requirement or a uh, provision that asked that people be coordinated in some way or provide uh, communication with the manager of our Channel 26 that there's a communication between the two entities and I just wonder what relationship does People TV have with our um, operator of our television channel? Yes, me and Ms. Harris, we have a relationship. And what does that relationship entail? She lets me know what um, what I'm supposed to do as far as the meetings. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's, it's, I've asked her for different things. Uh, they have, they've got equipment that we can use to server her people. If she knows, the last time she was here has been a couple of years ago. Yeah. So, uh, which I understand with the pandemic and her health issues. So, but we do have a relationship. You know, I don't know. You want to on the scale from one to ten or what? No, I want there to be. There's. Uh, well, we need to know that the contract has been executed, frankly, and we need to look at the uh, provisions contained in that contract to make sure that they are being followed uh, as the committee with some oversight responsibilities over this contract. then we want to know the financial end of the relationship 
and then also the reporting requirements not only are to us but also to the um, person who is running our channel 26. so just want to make sure that we are complying with the terms of the agreement as dollars are going to be flowing to be two mm -hmm. people tv pursuant to a contract we just want to follow the contract Madam Chair, I, you, your call is breaking up, and so I couldn't get every word that you were saying, uh, but let me repeat what I thought I heard, is that you wanted to make sure that I get with Ms. Harris to make sure the contract, everything in the contract is being done correctly as far as the money is concerned. Uh, I mentioned I heard that, but with Ms. I, Ms. Harris was the first one I called when we didn't get receive any money with while we were negotiating the contract, and she let me know that while the contract is in negotiation, we would not get any money. So well, I, no, that's not that. That's part of what I said. What I was saying was the duty and the oversight role that this committee has are in maybe two or three buckets. One, we want to know about governance. Is the board fully populated? We want to know about the finances as dollars are flowing from the city to people tv and then thirdly um i haven't seen the executed contract so i'm just speaking from prior contracts there's the uh provision in prior contracts that asks that there be um communication between people tv and our manager of channel 26 uh and you say you do have a relationship with miss harris and so these, they're just a few checkpoints that as a committee of purview we want to make sure that we are doing our due diligence in that regard okay. so so thank you for this update um our next step will be to follow the execution of the contract and then to have the um, accountability points identified in that contract to have okay. those tracked by this committee by way of the updates that we will get from people tv sounds wonderful and and i okay. I, I want to uh go back on Michael's sentiments on inviting everyone on the utilities committee open door and anytime you want to do anything to the to the constituents as far as TV putting it over the channel we are ready and willing to do that for you appreciate that appreciate that thank you very much this is a conversation to be continued thank you okay thank you uh-huh all right <laughs> All right. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Evans, if you would read um, the consent agenda, please. Okay. Item number one, 210025, an ordinance by City Utilities Committee authorizing the Chief Financial Officer to amend the FY 2021 Water and Wastewater Renewal and Extension Fund budget in the amount of six million eight hundred thousand dollars and zero cents to transfer funds from the watershed reserve for appropriations and add funds to the listed capital maintenance projects and for other purposes item number two twenty one zero 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 two six an ordinance by city utilities committee authorizing the chief financial officer to amend the 2018 b water and wastewater commercial paper fund fy 2021 budget in the amount of two million forty two thousand dollars and zero cents to transfer funds from the 2018 b water and wastewater commercial paper reserve for appropriations and add funds to the small water meter installation project and for other purposes item number three twenty one zero 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 two seven an ordinance by city utilities committee authorizing the mayor or her designee in accordance with section 2-1161c article 10 procurement and real estate code of the city of atlanta code of ordinances to retroactively substitute pure technologies us inc engineering design technologies inc jv as a party to fc 8806 large diameter water line condition assessment from July 31, 2018, on behalf of the Department of Watershed Management to exercise renewal number two for FC 8806 for time only with a retroactive effective date of March 16, 2020 through March 15, 2021 to ratify the services rendered and authorize the payment of invoices from Pure Technology US Inc. Engineering Design Technologies Inc. JV from July 31, 2018 and for other purposes. That concludes the consent agenda. 
All right, thanks. Let's move to, and by virtue of having those read, they are accepted. Please go to the next uh, section. All right. These are ordinances for second reading. Item number four, 2017 an ordinance by City Utilities Committee authorizing the mayor to execute a preliminary engineering agreement with the State of Georgia Department of Transportation on behalf of the Department of Watershed Management for engineering design costs associated with utility relocations that conflict with the proposed project number listed state route 400 express lane expansion in Fulton County and to enable the Department of Watershed Management to be reimbursed in an amount not to exceed $646,933.00, authorizing the Chief Financial Officer to anticipate and appropriate funding to reimburse the Department of Watershed Management in an amount not to exceed $646,933.00 and for other, other purposes. All right, thank you, Mr. Boccaro. Are you on the line? Yeah, good morning, Madam Chair and Council Members. This is Rob Bacaro, Department of Watershed Management. This legislation is needed to authorize the Mayor to sign a preliminary engineering agreement with Georgia DOT. Uh, the agreement will allow for Georgia DOT to reimburse watershed management for the engineering costs associated with designing the relocation of one of our key 48-inch water transmission mains and various other smaller water mains that conflict with Georgia DOT's proposed SR400 toll lane expansion. The 48-inch water transmission main is essential to supply the Tomlo water treatment plant, as well as the distribution system in the city of Sandy Springs and North Fulton County. Uh, this uh, preliminary engineering agreement will allow watershed management to design the construction documents for the various water main relocations that will be included in the Georgia DOT's design, build, finance, operate and maintenance contract for the SR400 toll lane expansion. The estimated amount uh, of the engineering services is $646,933 and will be completed under one of our existing task orders, um, FC 7383B, Task Order 101. Good news is 100% of this cost is reimbursable by Georgia DOT under the executed preliminary engineering agreement. Uh, more details about the GDOT project and relocation design are provided in the project information over sheets, overview sheet attached with the legislation. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Motion to approve, Master Kate. Six seconds. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? If not, uh, please open the vote. One moment. All right. This is, it seems to be open. Oh, I, okay. Thank you. Then proceed. Uh, Ms. Boone, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Winslow, how do you vote? In favor. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'm not seeing the vote, so if you can, please proceed. Uh, it says uh, seven yes. It was unanimously approved. Thank you very much. I understand so that stands approved. I understand there's a lag time between what we're doing and it being picked up on channel 26. I don't know if the same delay is showing up on Facebook. So hopefully people can catch up with us, but let's move to, there's the vote. The vote is now showing. All right, so um, next item, please. Item number five, 201786. An ordinance by City Utilities Committee authorizing the mayor or her designee to enter into amendment number two for FC 9240, server management, maintenance, and backups with Sawatech Services, Inc. on behalf of the Department of Public Works to extend the term of the agreement on a month-to-month -month basis in accordance with section 2-1163, subsection C of the City of Atlanta Code of Ordinances for a period of up to six months beginning February 8th, 2021, through August 7th, 2021, in an amount not to exceed 
9,100, excuse me, exceed $149,940.00. All contracted work will be charged to and paid from department organization and account numbers listed and for other purposes. Thank you. Um, Ms. Welch, are you on the phone? Good morning. I'm here. Good morning. Please uh, talk to us about this paper. Uh, the Department of Public Works Office of Fleet Services uses fleet focus and fuel focus to manage the maintenance and inventory of the city of Atlanta, 6,000 plus pieces of equipment and the distribution of over 3 million gallons of fuel annually. The systems are critical to the daily operations of DPW and the city of Atlanta. And DPW is seeking an extension of the agreement to allow time to transition services to the Department of Atlanta Information Management. The purpose of this project is to provide continuing support to the city of Atlanta, fleet and fuel systems to all 26 locations around the city. The project cost proposal will provide all the necessary information regarding the support, maintenance and the advanced planning and preparation undertaking to ensure the city will have the capability to operate its critical fleet and fuel functions or normal operation and in the event of an emergency. Solitech has been successfully supporting the city fleet and fuel system and has successfully protected and rescued all of the supporting systems during the virus crisis. Any questions? Um, colleagues, any questions? Chef moves approval. All right. Any all right, Mr. Shook made the motion. Mr. Mavic Height seconded. Did I hear someone else speak? Well, that was Winslow, but that's okay. All right, got to speed it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, if there's no other discussion, uh, please open the vote. The vote is open. Yes. Ms. Winslow, how do you vote? In favor. Thank you, Ms. Boone. How do you vote? Yes. All right, thank you. The vote is closed at seven yes. All right, that stands uh, unanimously approved in favor. Um, next item, please. Item number six, 20-0-1787, an ordinance by City Utilities Committee authorizing the chief financial officer to amend the FY 2021 water and wastewater renewal and extension fund budget in the amount not to exceed $2 million and zero cents to transfer funds from the watershed reserve for appropriations for additional funding for the watershed vehicle and heavy equipment replacement program and for other purposes. Ms. Thomas, are you on the line? I'm here. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, good morning. The purpose of this legislation is for the continued replacement and modernization of the Department of Watershed Management's fleet. So with, uh, we are requesting that $2 million be transferred from the watershed reserves for the watershed vehicle and equipment replacement program. The $2 million will be used to continue to purchase much needed vehicles and equipment for fiscal year 21. This funding will allow the department to purchase roughly 60 new vehicles with the emphasis for a purchase this fiscal year going to light passenger vehicles in the following uh, call centers. And that would be the Office of Watershed Protection, the Office of Safety and Security and Emergency Management, the Office of Engineering Service, and the Office of Facility Management. This funding is critical because 44% of the department's vehicles and equipment is considered old or outside of its normal life cycle. And that uh, normal life cycle is seven years or older. However, with the addition of this uh, roughly 60 new vehicles, the amount of equipment outside of life cycle could decrease to less than 40% for the department. When we started this journey of fleet replacement and modernization four years ago, 
more than 60% of the department's vehicles and our equipment was outside of life cycle. So we are trending in the right direction uh, as we continue to uh, modernize and replace aging equipment. So very good. Thank you very much for that overview. Colleagues, are there any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Move approval, Winslow. Second, Boone. Sure, second. Uh, I think Ms. Boone Beach. So we have a motion by Ms. Winslow to approve, seconded by Ms. Boone. If there's no other discussion, please open up the vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed to uh, seven yeas. All right, that is unanimously approved. I'm hesitating because we're still trying to catch up on uh, Sound 26 and social media platforms. All right, Mr. Evans, please go to the next item. Item number seven, 210 0012. An ordinance by, excuse me, an ordinance by Council Member Marcy Collier Overstreet authorizing the mayor or her designee to enter into amendment number two for the uh, contract number listed, landfill slope mowing and clearing services with Genesis Testing Services, Inc. on behalf of the Department of Public Works to extend the term of the agreement for six months from January 25th, 2021 through July 24th, 2021, and to add funding in an amount not to exceed $60,000, zero cents, in accordance with Section 2-1163, Subsection C, Article 10, Procurement and Real Estate Code of the City of Atlanta, Code of Ordinances, all contracted work shall be charged to and paid from the fund department organization and account numbers listed herein and for other purposes. All right, thank you very much. Is uh, Ms. Lipscomb available? Yes, ma'am. Um, Carla Lipscomb, Public Works Manager, Senior Department of Public Works. Um, this legislation is needed for Genesis Testing Service in order for them to continue providing slope mowing services for the city's four closed landfills. Um, this service is required by the Georgia Environmental Protection Division. Um, all sites have to be maintained for a minimum of 30 years. Um, this extension is to tire over until the Department of uh, Procurement can complete the review phase for the new solicitation. All right, uh, colleagues, any questions? Let's see, is anyone a question? Chuck moves approval. All right, thank you. Second, Mazakite. Thank you, Mr. Mazakite. Uh, if there's no other unreadiness, please open the vote. The vote is open. Ms. Boone, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. And Ms. Winslow, how do you vote? In favor. Thank you. The vote is closed and it's seven yeas. All right, thank you. That is unanimously approved. Waiting a few minutes to catch up. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Evans, next slide, please. There's item number eight. There's a substitute in your packet for 210015. It's going to change the uh, caption. Would uh, you like to consider that? Uh, I'm trying to make a motion to bring the substitute forward, please. I'll make second, that motion. Second. Thank you. Uh, Winslow, well, the second. <laughs> you will be a third, Ms. Winslow, but that's good. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's bring the substitute forward, please. Uh, a vote on that. Uh, oh, you're in favor. I heard you. Uh, Ms. Boone, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Fifth 
it's a unanimous vote to substitute is before us. I'll read that caption to you. This is an ordinance by Andrea L. Boone as substituted by City Utilities Committee to ratify FC 7383A, Architectural Engineering and Design Services with Arcadis BPA Joint Venture, a joint venture of Arcadis G&M Inc. and Brindley Peters and Associates, and to authorize the mayor or her designee to amend the agreement to extend the term on a month-to-month -month basis for a period not to exceed six months retroactively effective February 8th, 2021 through August 7th, 2021, on behalf of the Department of Public Works in an amount not to exceed $650,000, and also on behalf of the Department of Watershed Management. In accordance with Section 2-1163, Subsection C, Article 10, Procurement and Real Estate Code of the City of Atlanta, Code of Ordinances, all contracted work will be charged to a from the fund department organization and account numbers listed herein and for other purposes. All right, thank you very much. All right, thanks. All right, Mr. Boccaro. Yeah, uh, this is Rob Boccaro, Department of Watershed Management. Uh, uh, the Department of Watershed Management supports this uh, le legislation as we um, have various task orders that are um, being completed by Arcadis, and it's going to take uh, several more months and, until such time as um, to, to wrap up that work. And I know the intent is to award new AE joint venture contracts, uh, but it's going to take some time before those uh, contracts are awarded. So this will um, please support this legislation. All right, thank you. Any questions? No, I'm sorry. Uh, Shook will move uh, approval as substituted. Very good. Thank you. Ms. Winslow? In favor. So you're doing a second. Thank you very much. Any I'm other unready? I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> if there's no other in readiness, please open that vote. The vote is open. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Boone, how do you vote? Yes. All right, thank you. The vote is closed and it's seven yeas. Thank you. That is unanimous and stands approved. Next item. Madam Chair, that item is a dual referred item and it just for everyone's knowledge, it will go to the Finance and Executive Committee next. To thank you very much. Item number 9-210-0017, an ordinance by Council Member Andrea L. Boone authorizing the mayor or her designee in accordance with Section 2-1163C, Article 10, Procurement and Real Estate Code of the City of Atlanta, Code of Ordinances, to ratify agreement FC 8171, Yard Debris Processing and Diversion Program with Tag Grinding Services, Inc., on behalf of the Department of Public Works and extend the term on a month-to-month -month basis for a period not to exceed three months retroactively beginning January 6, 2021 through March 5, 2021 in an amount not to exceed $500,000.00 all contract to work to be charged to and paid from the fund department organization and account number listed herein and for other purposes. All right, thank you. Um, let's see, the speaker, Ms. Lincoln, or yes. Madam Chair, I'm told Keith Robinson will be speaking to this item. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Robinson? Good morning, Madam Chair and Council Members. I'm Chief Robinson, Interim Deputy Commissioner for the Department of Public Works. Um, this is a request to enter into a month-to-month -month agreement with Tag Grinding Inc., um, not to exceed three months and 500K. Um, this agreement will cover the time gap needed until the Department awards its contract. Um, if awarded, this legislation will allow the Department of Public Works to continue processing and hauling yard trimmings for residential and parks and recreation collections. 
Furthermore, it allows the city to remain compliant with the Georgia Environmental Protection Division rules and regulations for stockpiling and recycling. Any questions? Uh, colleagues? Yeah, sure. Okay, we have two. Question as well. Yeah, so go ahead, uh, whoever thinks they're first. Go ahead, Dustin. Uh, uh, thank you, Councilman Shook. Uh, so uh, thank you, Ms. Robinson. Um, I know you weren't the presenter the last time we went over this, but I'm going to sound like a broken record because I'm going to be asking the same questions that I asked last time. Number one is this is, I believe, is it the second or third extension of this? Uh, where are we with uh, getting a new contract? So I'll begin with that. Okay. Yeah, we are in the process of getting a new contract. We've already submitted over the uh, the uh, award letter to the Department of Public Works. So hopefully, this there should not be another extension. So we're we're in the process of awarding it. I believe we can't. I mean, we're in that process right now. Okay. And the other question, which was an issue last time as well, as you mentioned yourself, this isn't just a DPW facility. Uh, Park uses this facility heavily to bring yard debris and trees to, as well as uh, watershed management. So why it appears in the legislation the only department paying into this extension is DPW. Okay, um, give me one second. Let me run through a quick notes real quick real here. Uh, we do charge back um, for the cost to the other departments. Okay, and do you know roughly the, the amount of 500000 each each of those departments would pay? Um, that will be dependent on the amount that each of the departments bring in, but let me see if I can get an estimate real quick on, you know, really it's going to be based on the tonnage that each of the departments bring into the facility. Okay, and then um, I know uh, we've, we've done some business and been, been in some larger discussions about this facility, and I think we have a a meeting coming up in the next couple of weeks, so I'm looking forward to that and, and uh, moving that conversation forward. No, absolutely. I look forward to it as well. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Councilman. All right. Mr. Schiff? Yeah, thank you. Um, can you give us an update on the status of the uh, Office of Solid Waste Yard Trimmings uh, Pickup Program? Yes. Um, so currently, you know, due you know to COVID nineteen and some of the challenges that we're having right now, you know, right now we're actually picking up both garbage and yard trimmings together. Um, what we're also doing as well too is really looking at some of the operational challenges that we've been having it with the department in itself, and really looking at ways that we can actually improve the yard trimmings as well in terms of the pickups and stuff. So currently, we've been meeting daily with the operation teams to really look at ways where we can actually streamline to, you know, decrease some of the misses that we have out there, but also improve the service as well, too. So that, those are things that we're definitely working through. Um, and so you're short personnel due to COVID, correct? And we have some staffing shortages as well, too, yeah. And, what, and how is that trending in terms of the, the employee health in the face of the pandemic? Has it sort of been the same or getting better, getting worse? Right now, it's starting. It's starting to. Um, let me let me grab my note real quick here, because I was actually looking at some of that those data. Uh, actually, it's actually starting to get worse right now. I mean, that's one of the, the big challenges that we're having. I mean, and then also we've got you know a couple of key points where we're getting you know some of our um, leadership team that have been hit with COVID as well too. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass along a question to constituent um, who's you know, not having his yard trimmings picked up timely passed on to me, which is, would it help if the department switched to, say, an every three-week frequency, or would that just merely make things worse? Um, I'd, I'd have to do some analysis on that before, before I would comment on that, because I would really like to look at the data first before we would actually, you know, comment on if it would make it worse or better. I mean, I, I mean, I really would like to look at the data first. 
Yeah, understood. Um, and if you could um, do so, I'd appreciate knowing uh, the response. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ms. Shepard. Yes. Where is this location that we're talking about? Where exactly do you all take this? Where, where is it? Oh, for the yard for the yard trimming, that's at the Hartsville Jackson location. Okay. On James Jackson Parkway. Okay. All right. And then Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah. When Councilmember Shepard's done, uh, want to speak again? Yeah, I, I kind of see you on television. Yeah. All right, Miss oh, Shepard, what you? Yeah. I, so, so is that what I'm sorry? So that's where it's always taken. And so, we're, when we talk about renegotiating the contract, is that going to be for the same location? Is that what we're talking about? Also, that is correct. Yes. Okay. All right. And I'm just going to piggyback on what Mr. Shook said. And we've been talking about this in on the KAB board and other things in terms of looking at, you know, we have a shortage of employees and we're and things are happening right now. But there's always been a discussion on recycling in terms of the fact that, uh, for instance, I recycle, but I don't put my recycling out every week. Uh, I put mine out maybe every two weeks, depending on my usage, uh, or you know, every other week, or no more than every three weeks. And so, and I think an assessment has been done that shows that across the city, where recycling is increasing, but if we look at the usage in terms of recycling in the bins, there is a opportunity possibly to have recycling done not every week but every other week in terms of and that may help in terms of, of uh, the labor force and just in terms of how we actually doing things has anybody have you all discussed that yes uh, absolutely and that's one of the things that we've been discussing you know the possibility of potentially alternating you know recycling and yard trips mm -hmm. on alternate weeks yes so where are we with that? I mean, when you're saying we're discussing it, where, how long, or who's, who's making that decision? I guess it's something. Well, they're having a quarterly report next month, so maybe it can be addressed at the quarterly report. Yeah, we, that, I think that would be the best time when we get the quarterly report, absolutely. All right. Thank you. You are. That's it, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Masakai. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to pile on the questions about yard waste pick up um, and I know that uh, obviously we're down people due to COVID uh, we're having some problems where uh, there will be some missed yard waste uh, one week and folks will continue to uh, collect yard waste and put it out and then it becomes a bulk collection and it doesn't get picked up and scheduling a bulk collection is um, and not a timely process so can you please address how you would recommend that residents deal with a situation like that yeah that, that's a good question um I, I think there's several ways that we can actually do you know you know report the missions as soon as possible i think would be one of the best ways to go about that i mean i think obviously that would be one of the best ways to approach that and i think also from our end as well too is you know, that we're out there actively a little bit more and looking at, you know, following the routes a little bit more strenuously as well, too, making sure that we don't have any of those messages as well, too. So I think that's very important, too. But more importantly, I think really recommending the constituents to report messages because we're trying to capture, you know, the messages a lot more, I mean, in our data and information. Yeah. Could you circulate to this committee where we are in terms of uh, – uh, you know, percentage of pickups and how that's been trending. Do you have that information handy? Yeah, I, I can. You know, when I go offline, I can I can send that information to you. Do you know what it is uh, currently? The percentage of pickups right now, um, as it, in terms of actual misses itself, or yeah, how many times are we? On. What percentage are we missing? So, so our misses, that's kind of what our misses are actually based off of some of our SLA data that we're looking at. So our misses on the actual total trash, you know, it's less than 10% right now, but we're still trying to hone in a little bit better on, on that data and how we actually collect that information. So right now we're trending at less than 10. 
Mm -hmm. Are we still using a third party to supplement um, our operations, given that we're down um, personnel? Yes, we are actually um, still supplementing a third party. So the third party has actually been, the contract has been used for some of the bulk pickup. So we're actually supplementing it at that moment as we speak. We're closely working with them along with 311 to address their issues. Is there any way to increase the, the, uh, the supplement that we're getting there and have them go out and do, uh, get, get the yard trimmings? Um, let me let me get back uh, and let me just look because um, I think one of the things is we've cleared a lot of the backlog um, that we originally had. So let me kind of gather where we really are there, so that way we can see what we need. I mean, if we need to supplement any further and stuff. I think one of the things that we're doing is since we cleaned up a lot of the backlog, um, we may need to uh, you know you know not use contractors as much as what I'm saying. Okay, and that, like I said, in the supply, and they, typically the contractors are really only addressing the bulk, which is less than, you know, one week, you know, from wait for bulk. Right, I, and I'm wondering if we could have them pick up some of the yard waste because we're not being able to, to achieve 100% of that. So uh, if you could let me know on that. Um, I, I get it that this is a difficult time to, to – have continuous uh, operations. We just need to supplement those operations with the uh, outside resources so we can deliver services to our uh, residents who are paying for them. So thank you very okay. much. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Hillis. Thank you, Cheryl Marchabong. Uh, just wanted to provide some more comments and provide some clarity uh, when Council Member Shepard was speaking. She asked, the location of this, and, and Mr. Robinson replied, Hartsville Jackson, well, that's, that's not the name of the facility. It's not, that's the name of our airport. It's nowhere near the airport. It's actually in District 9 uh, in my neighborhood uh, at the old Hartsfield incinerator right on the Chattahoochee River. Um, the incinerator, of course, is no longer used. Uh, that was back when we decided burning trash wasn't such a good idea, but the land there is now used. For all of the city's uh, yard waste, all of the trees that are cut down by the city, whether uh, that's parks or watershed or DPW, all those all of those materials go to this uh, go to this land and is uh, they're ground up. Uh, it's a very loud operation. Uh, it's presented a lot of problems over the years. It's less than just a few hundred feet uh, from residential homes. Uh, so that's what I was talking about earlier when I said we were. I was in discussions with uh, Mr. Robinson. We visited the facility and visited with some of the homeowners around there. And you know, you asked if this was uh, still going to be the location, even with a new contract. The contract itself isn't necessarily tied to the location, uh, because really the only facilities at at that location are you know an office and a bathroom. Uh, it's all outside operations uh, in the open air. Uh, and there's been been quite a number of issues uh, with with the nuisance of that that creates uh, uh, people's homes and uh, cars have been coated in dust. Uh, this is a uh, my understanding a six day a week operation, uh, sometimes ten to twelve hours a day, and we're looking to get a, get a handle on that and look at some short term fixes, and then the 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 better fix is finding an alternate location. And I know uh, uh, we've been looking at, at a few of those, so I'm hopeful that uh, the uh, this can be resolved and, and the many homeowners that are uh, really fed up with this is, are not going to have to enter into litigation against the city, uh, which they've threatened to do. Uh, but would be glad uh, to have the law department update everyone uh, on, on the opinion that they provided uh, back a couple of years ago. Uh, when the homeowners submitted uh, many complaints of, of trespass and and of, of nuisance regarding this facility. Uh, so I'm, of course, of the opinion, given this is in my district and, and neighborhood, that uh, we need to put forth uh, some much greater efforts to relocate this facility where it's not just a couple hundred feet away from, from multiple residential homes. Uh, so 
uh, I'll I'll finish up with that. Mr. Evans, or is anyone else you? I still see Council Member Shepard and Council Member Hillis, uh, but you may wish to see if they have additional comments. Holly? I just want to say thank you, Mr. Hillis, for that clarity in terms of where it is, because it was baffling to me when we were saying it was at Hartfield. I did the same thing, so thank you for giving me clarity. And I do understand your concerns, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right, this is a topic that we will need to uh, look into a bit more, but the item before us is uh, short-term um, solution, so I'll entertain a motion. Just as a reminder, it's approve, deny, file. Okay, anyway, I'll entertain the motion. Move approval, wind flow. Thank you. I'll second it. If there's no other discussion, please open the vote. The vote is open. Ms. Boone, how do you vote? Yes. All right, thank you. The vote is closed and it's seven yeas. No, excuse me, it's six yeas, zero nays, and one abstention. That stands approved. Thank you very much. And we'll go to the next item. Thank you. Item number 10, there is a substitute in your packet. It's item 21018. Does it change the caption? Remind me. Uh, yes, ma'am. I um, move to bring the substitute forward. Shook seconds. Thank you. Let's open the vote on that. The vote is open. Ms. Bill, do you vote? Yes. Ms. Winslow, how do you vote? Favor. Okay. The vote is closed and it's 78. All right, that's unanimous. Unanimously approved. The uh, subject be read in. Please. Item number 21-0018, an ordinance by Council Member Andrea L. Boone as substituted by City Utilities Committee, authorizing the mayor or her designee to enter into amendment number 10 for FC 5035A annual contract for the disposal of municipal solid waste services with Georgia Waste Systems, Inc., DBA Waste Management of Atlanta on behalf of the Department of Public Works and the Department of Watershed Management to extend the term of the agreement on a month-to-month -month basis for a period up to two months beginning January 1, 2021 through February 28, 2021 in an amount not to exceed $1,089,891.00 to authorize a payment rate of $41.00 per ton for municipal solid waste and construction and demolition debris disposal in accordance with section 2-1163 subsection C of the, of the city of Atlanta code of ordinances, all contracted work to be charged to and paid from the fund department organization and account numbers listed in for other purposes. Okay, and who's gonna speak to us about this paper? Quinn Fletcher. Good morning, Madam. Good morning, Madam Chair. Quentin Fletcher. Quentin Fletcher, Department of Watershed Management. Also on behalf of the Department of Public Work and DWM, the purpose of this legislation will extend the term of the agreement starting January 1st until February 28th, 2021, while both departments are in the process of working and awarding new contracts. 
entering into amendment number 10 also introduced adding a rate of $41 per ton for MSW and CD disposal. The rate for biosolids did not change. This request is critical as the city is required to meet the requirements of the NPDES permit issued under the Environmental Protection Division. Under these permits, the city is required to maintain critical services to meet discharge compliance limits to protect public health and the Chattahoochee River water quality. All right, thank you. Are there any speakers lined up to vote? Ms. Shepard? I mean, just to ask a question, I'm sorry. No, no that was left from last time, I apologize. Okay, no problem. Um, colleagues, any questions? Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, Mr. Shook, and then Mr. Hillis, go ahead. Okay, uh, yeah, thank you. Go back and repeat the uh, the new proposed rates. Did you say 41? Yes, Council Member Shook, um, the rates are $41 per ton for NSW and construction debris disposal. Um, the rates for biosolids did not change. Okay. So, but the the, uh, the other rate, the forty-one dollar rate, did that change? Yes. Uh, it changed to forty-one dollars per ton. Um, the previous amount was thirty-eight dollars and fifty cents. So we do see the increase um, to the forty-one dollars per ton. All right. And did the enabling contract give the vendor um, the right to um, uh, propose uh, rate hikes um, that we are required to approve? Council Member Shook, can you please repeat that question? Uh, yeah, does the contract, does, does the enabling contract uh, give the vendor the ability to uh, propose fees that, um, you know, that we have to accept? I mean, if they wanted to say 45, would this proposal be for $45 a time? Um, no. But because this is for essential services, it can be um, authorized up on the, of the ordinance based on the market rate. All right. Uh, final question. Where is uh, the solid waste um, offices um, in terms of your looking at longer term, you know, to see what other, you know, alternate uh, avenues might be out there for the disposal of this? We are currently um, working on a special procurement as well as looking at other alternative alternative methods um, for disposal. We're also checking um, market rates and looking at um, new technology. And when will that evaluation be complete? DPW is in the process of awarding a solicitation. For DWM, we are in the process of, you know, working on a special procurement. All right, thank you. Um, you know, Madam Chair, I'm going to announce at this point that um, having had my free 10 day trial of 2021, I don't believe I'm going to subscribe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Kellett. Well, thank you, Chairwoman Archibong. So, Councilmember Shook, you know, expressed my concerns, and they were, I guess, partly answered. But you know, this the original hired in 2016. I mean, we're talking five years ago now, and we've continually extension after extension, whether it's a year or three months or six months. I mean, what's the end game here? When are we going to get a new contract 
uh, for these services. I mean, I would imagine that each extension, when DPW or DWM has come to the council, it's always, you know, we're in the process of getting a new new agreement. So, I mean, how many more times is this going to happen? What's, what's the end game? I think we need to hear from uh, Mr. Robinson on this one. Steve Robinson, are you still on the line? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, did you hear the question? Yeah, can, can you repeat the question again? I, I, can you repeat the question again real quick? Yeah, Mr. Hellis, go ahead. Yeah, so this original agreement expired somewhere around five years ago now. DPW and DWM have continually come back to the council, gotten extension after extension after extension, whether it's a year, six months, or three months, whatever. Um, and I haven't listened to those council meetings recently. I know I've been in a few uh, in my tenure. But I imagine each time it's, oh, we're working on a new agreement. We're working on a new agreement. So what is the end game here? How many more extensions are we going to be granting? I mean, like I said, this original agreement expired five years ago. This is getting, you know, beyond ridiculous. No, I agree. Um, so what we've done is we have submitted the request to DLP for the award. So we've, you know, identified, you know, who that potential vendor will be selected uh, in the letter of award. Is that just for the public works portion of it? Uh, I mean, I, um, for Mr. Fletcher uh, mentioned the uh, special procurement yeah. for watershed. Yes, absolutely, yes. And this should be the final extension as well, too. And so what are the timeline of each of those, both the, both the DPW part and the special procurement for DWN? Okay, so the timeline for the DPW part is, let me just go, run through my notes real here. Um, you know, the legislation should be submitted in the next uh, cycle for the award. Okay, and what about the watershed portion? Um, Quentin Fletcher, our intent is to have the special procurement on cycle six. Understood. And what makes this a special procurement, not just a normal procurement? So the previous um, solicitation that DPW is about to award, um, we did not have any vendors for our biosolids. The the vendor only bid it for the MSW. Um, due to that, um, we were going to enter into a special procurement so that we could have a vendor handle um, the biosolids portion. Understood. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? If not, I'll entertain them. So if we don't uh, move this forward today, uh, what happens? Hello, this is Rita Brass with the Department of Public Works. If this is not moved forward today, the department will have, um, we will not be able to dispose of um, municipal solid waste in the city. As of when? As of um, the contract expired and this contract authorizes um, the renewal of the contract. So from January 1, so at any time the vendor could stop accepting MSW. So is there an alignment between the cycles of when this will, the legislative cycle of when we will have the final vendor, the more uh, permanent vendor in place? I think I heard um, cycle 12 from uh, Watershed and cycle something else from DPW. Help me understand that. Um, so the departments will work together to make sure that the two pieces of legislation will coincide 
um, Public Works will do the legislation for the award of the contract, and Watershed Management will do the legislation for the special procurement, which will still um, require joint um, departmental management. So we will work together to make sure that they coincide in the legislative process. Yeah, this puts the committee in, you know, the proverbial, you know, between the rock and the hard place. You know, we don't want the services to be discontinued, yet we don't want the process to be disrespected. And we do want to have uh, consistent vendors and, and to not have the oops on such a regular basis. And I think you're hearing that from the colleagues that have spoken and the ones that are pondering what to do. So this is an unacceptable way to do business. And I think you hear us. Um, and that we are not going to continue operating this way. But at this point, I am going to make the motion to uh, approve. I have to second it. Wrong, I did have an additional question. Uh, okay. point of clarity. Uh -huh. I want to do the second. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Uh, just there seem to be, uh, at least from my understanding, some conflict in between what uh, Ms. Brazel just said and what Mr. Uh, I believe it was Mr. Robinson said. Uh, I believe Ms. Braswell said that these new procurements are going to line up. But uh, what, what Mr. Robinson and I thought had said is the NSW permit was re almost ready to go and going to be presented to us very soon. And I thought Mr. Fletcher said the DWM or watershed management part would take some additional time. Uh, for the special procurement. So just wanted to put clarity on that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I heard her say they would be in alignment, so I didn't know how they were going to make the sausage, but I really appreciate your uh, asking that follow-up question. Ms. Braswell. Thank you. Yes, we will continue to work in alignment with the departments to ensure that the two coincide. So we'll work with watershed management on getting the two pieces of legislation in. Is there any way we could create, and I don't know if this is a um, legal question or not, but approve on condition that that alignment happens. So we would approve it now for something that would have to happen in the future, then we wouldn't be able to undo our approval now. So I'm having a hard time even articulating what I'm thinking. Um, hmm. So I made a motion to approve if, there, if it's not seconded okay. that. Second. Boom. Okay, Ms. Boone is just seconded. Any other unreadiness? Uh, if not, we'll go ahead and open the vote, please. The vote is open. Ms. Winslow, how do you vote? In favor. Thank you. The vote is closed. It is five yeas, zero nays, and two abstentions. All right. That stands approved. It left out of committee. Please take note that we are about not to be in this posture again. So that stands approved on substitute. Thank you very much. And is this a dual referral as well? It is. This item is dual referred to Finance Executive Committee, as was the previous item, 2102. 0017. I should have mentioned that too. They will both travel to finance executive committee now. Thank you. I urge that between now and, and FEC that uh, there be a clearer response to how there's going to be the alignment between the DPW and the DWN um, handling of this action as we look at legislatively approving um, a contract moving forward. Thank you. Next item. Item number 11, yeah. 20R3010, 21R3010, a resolution by City Utilities Committee to correct resolution number 20R4270 to reflect the correct project information number for the agreements between the City of Atlanta and the State of Georgia Department of Transportation on behalf of the Department of Watershed Management 
for the project located at CS519 Armor Drive at CS520 Monroe Drive and CS516 Plaster Avenue in Fulton County and for other purposes. Subcode's approval. Thank you. I'll second, second that. Okay. I second. Okay, that's fine. Any unwet readiness? If not, let's please open the vote. The vote is open. All right, Ms. Winslow, how do you vote? In favor. Ms. Boone, how do you vote? Yes. All right, thank you both. Okay. The vote is closed and it is seven yes. All right, that uh, collection legislation stands approved. Uh, are there any other items to be considered by the committee today? That concludes the legislative agenda. All right, colleagues, anything else for the good of the order? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. No, thanks. Great all. Thank you. Thank all right, you. don't forget to get ready with your next meeting. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, goodbye.